Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and let's talk about all the books I read in the month of December. So in the month of December, I ended up reading seven books, which is awesome for me, uh, considering that the holidays were last month, and I did have one DNF. Before we get into the books, I wanted to quickly thank today's video sponsor. Oh, it's updated up. <laughs> Book of the Month. If you don't know what Book of the Month is, it is an online, fast-growing, popular book subscription service where every month the Book of the Month team will scour through hundreds of new release books and choose five for you to get to choose from as your book of the month. All five of these books are typically new releases, they're all in hardcover format, and it's a, usually a variety of genres. So no matter what kind of book you do like to read, you will hopefully find something that really sounds interesting to you. It is totally risk-free. If you don't find something that interests you for that month, you can always skip with no hassle, no punishment of any kind. Or if none of the five books interest you, you can always select one of their backlist titles. Book of the Month's price is also one of the best that you can get for a new release hardcover. If you use this code here, it's only $9.99. So let's go over this month's selections. First book that they have as an option is Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. This one is a debut novel of how the inheritance of betrayals, secrets, memories, and even names can shape relationships in history. Deeply evocative and beautifully written, Black Cake is an extraordinary journey through through the life of a family changed forever by the choices of its matriarch. Next option is The Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis, which is a historical fiction about secrets, betrayal, and murder within one of New York City's most impressive Gilded Age mansions. They also have Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly as one of their options, which is a contemporary romance about the first openly non-binary contestant on America's favorite cooking show who falls for their clumsy competition in this delicious romantic comedy debut that is both fantastically fun and crack your heart wide open vulnerable. The next selection is Fiona and Jane by Jean Chen Ho, which is a witty, warm, and irreverent book that traces the lives of two young Taiwanese-American women as they navigate friendship, sexuality, identity, and heartbreak over two decades. And finally, I think this would have been my pick. There are really good ones this month, but this one has been one of my most anticipated releases, and it is the adult thriller Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins, which is set on one island, has six visitors, and countless secrets. When one person goes missing and another turns up dead, the remaining friends wonder what dark currents lie beneath this impenetrable paradise and who else will be swept under its secluded chaos. And finally, I was so kindly sent an add-on for this month, which is another anticipated release for me, which is The Maid by Nita Prose. This is both a clue-like lock-roomed mystery and a heartwarming journey of the spirit. The maid explores what it means to be the same as everyone else and yet entirely different and reveals that all mysteries can be solved through connection to the human heart. So there are some absolutely fantastic options this month. Thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video and working with me again. All of the information is going to be in the description box down below, as well as the discount code that you can use to get your first box for only $9.99. And now let's get back to the video. Let's see, what order should we go in today? Let's go in the order of least favorite to favorite, starting with the DNF. And the way I'm gonna try to do wrap ups and let me know how you'd like this format is instead of giving you a detailed summary of each book, I'm going to try to give you kind of three main buzzwords or phrases to describe that book along with the genre and my star rating. So let me know how you like this. I, I'm trying to play around with my wrap-up format. So let's start with the one DNF and that was Dreams of the Dying by Nicholas Lietzow. Yeah, I did end up DNFing this one probably around the 50% mark and I know that this is a very polarizing book uh, for whatever reason. It seems like either people love this book, it's like a favorite of all time, or can't stand this book. Like I've seen two very separate reviews that I'm gonna link down below. Patrick, if you haven't seen his channel, he's fantastic. He loved this book, five stars, one of his favorite books. And then my friend, Liana from Liana's Library, who also has a fa fantastic channel, she 
couldn't stand this book. It was like her worst book of the year. <laughs> so like two very opposite reviews, which is crazy. I haven't seen a book this polarizing since Rage of Dragons. <laughs> For me, I think I was more on the side of Liana's review, unfortunately. Um, and that's kind of why I DNF'd it because I could just tell uh, with my enjoyment that it was kind of just trending downwards. So the three keywords I'm gonna give you here are it's, it's adult fantasy, but it very much concentrates on a lot of social commentary. It also has a lot of horror elements and plays around with dreams as being kind of a backdrop of this world and the magic system, all of which sounded really cool to me. The problem I was having was characters, were, was the first big one. I found the characters very, very two-dimensional. Like they felt like very bland to me. They didn't have much personality. There was kind of this romance subplot and love triangle going on that I was not a fan of at all. And I just felt very disconnected to the characters. I, I really didn't get a sense of who they were. And the social commentary aspect of the book is something I can see a lot of people really appreciating about the book. But for me, because the characters didn't feel like fully fleshed out humans, it felt like it was almost just the author putting their own perspective into the book through the characters if that makes sense. Like, it didn't feel like the character's beliefs that they were giving to us. It felt like it was the author telling their own beliefs to us. I don't know, it was weird. It was weird. And so it just kind of kept taking me out of the story because I was like, is this the characters who feel this way or the author? And <laughs> I don't know why, it's, in some books, it is woven in so organically and it just didn't, work for me in this one. So I'm really, really bummed about it. But all that to say, if you haven't tried it, you absolutely should just because of how polarizing it is. But so many people love this book. I've seen so many five-star reviews. Uh, love it. All Favorite of all time. I don't want to stop you from giving it a try if it sounds really intriguing because you may love it and it may totally work for you. Just for some of those reasons, it, it wasn't clicking with me at all. And I could tell that it just my enjoyment wasn't there and I was just gonna keep going downhill and it's a really long book like it would have been hours and hours and hours more reading and I just knew it <laughs> I wasn't gonna like love it so yeah I'm really bummed about it um, but I still highly recommend giving it a try and I'm gonna link uh, both Liana and Patrick's reviews down below if you want to see some other people's opinions on this All right, one. Now let's start with my least favorite of the month that I actually did finish. And my least favorite this month was A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan. This was a three star for me. It is adult fantasy. And to give you three buzzwords, it is told in the style of a memoir from a fictional character named Lady Trent and she is studying dragons, and it's taking her on different adventures throughout the story with a really quirky writing style. My favorite part of this book was absolutely 100% the writing style, and I highly recommend listening to this book on audio. That was what was recommended to me, and I, I did really enjoy the audiobook. I could tell though that if I had physically read this, I don't know if I would have made it. I think I only finished this because of the audiobook and how well it was narrated. The writing styles was so quirky, so fun. The problem was the lack of plot. Like I just never felt truly connected to the story. I never felt like I was escaping into this story because it didn't really have that cohesive plot that kind of carries you forward the way it's told because it's in that memoir format it's kind of like little mini stories that are all connected throughout the book but at the end of the day i was like i don't care enough about this main character to care reading about her life in this memoir type way i can see this being so beloved by so many people because of the writing style and lady trend's a fantastic character just for me the way it was told is not my favorite and I don't think I'm going to be continuing on with this series. But again, I can see why so many people 
love, love this series and this book um, because it, it is such a distinct voice that it has. And I appreciated that. I just didn't, I just didn't love the story itself. So <laughs> another bummer. The rest of the books that I have are all four stars and above. So really good reading month. It's just the only issue is that I only have one five star and the rest are all four stars. So I'm just going to kind of start with like, I guess the lowest four star and work our way up to that five star. All right, so I think the first four star book I'm going to talk about is Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. I have the dust jacket off because I just love the look of it without the dust jacket. Well, this is the sequel and conclusion to the Nikolai duology that is kind of the continuation series from Shadow and Bone. And I had so much fun with this book because I already loved the world and the characters. Like seeing some of the characters from Shadow and Bone and even seeing some of the characters without giving too much away, seeing some other characters that we were introduced to in the Grishaverse come into this book. Like there were so many moments where just as a fan of this world and the previous characters we were introduced to, I was like, oh my god, this is so fun. But at the end of the day, I think if I hadn't already had that connection, the story itself wasn't the best. Uh, and I thought that there was something that happened at the end of the first book that I thought was going to be a game changer. I thought was going to be like this huge thing that carried forward into the second book and was going to be this big thing that we had to deal with. And it ended up not being a very big deal in this book. It was kind of brushed over in a really convenient way. Like I was very surprised with how the first one ended, that it wasn't a bigger deal than it was. So I had a couple issues with the book and just the story itself and how it was executed. But at the end of the day, I still had such a good time because I just love being lost in this world so much. So I think if you are a big enough Grishaverse fan and just love the characters so much, love the world so much, and just love escaping into it, then I would highly recommend this duology. But if you were like, eh, I like the Grishaverse, but it's like not my favorite thing ever. I don't know that I would recommend this duology just because it's, I don't know that the story itself is strong enough to like win any fans over if you aren't already invested, if that makes sense. So overall, like fun time. Oh, I realized I didn't even say my buzzwords. So it's YA fantasy. I have to give buzzwords for sequels. I don't know that I'm going to give buzzwords for sequels. Grishaverse, fun characters, fun fan moments. Those are your three buzzwords. <laughs> yeah, overall, like, I like the Nikolai duology. I have fun with it, but I wouldn't recommend it to, like, casual fans of the Grishaverse. Only read it if you, like, love the Grishaverse, like I do. <laughs> the next book I have is World War Z by Max Brooks. So this one is adult horror. I gave it four stars, and it is zombie apocalypse told in an interview format and examines different aspects of society if a zombie apocalypse were to occur. I'm not the biggest like zombie fan. Like I'm typically don't like zombies. Like I'm, I don't run out to see zombie movies or TV shows. I just don't really care for them. But if I am to like something zombie related, it is going to be told in this type of way. I really liked how this was told and executed, I thought it was really clever because you're not just following one character or one plot, you're really getting snippets from all these different perspectives, from military personnel, from casual people on the street, from people who lost families, from any, like all these different perspectives. And they're telling you their little snippets of stories of the zombie apocalypse and you're kind of going through it in chronological order where you start with people talking about how the zombie apocalypse began and then you go into when you're in the middle of it how that was for so many people and then the end how we got out of it like it was so cool how it was written it was just so clever and i loved examining like 
things like budgeting for, for a zombie apocalypse, and how that would affect our supply chain around the world, like things like that. It was like, oh my God, that's a really good point. <laughs> Didn't think about that. I just really appreciated the way this was told. I think it, I can see it not working for some people if you want to be with characters for a long time because you're really only with these characters for like little tiny bits and pieces of the book. I think the longest one probably lasted like four or five pages. So it's very small snippets of these characters' lives, but I just thought it was really cool. So I would recommend this one, um, especially to zombie fans. And as for someone who doesn't love zombies, I thought this was really well done. The next one I have, I can't believe I finally get to talk about this book in a wrap-up. I'm so happy I'm done with this. The Burning Light by Brent Weeks. I finished it. I finished it. I finished the Lightbringer series. I'm so happy to be done with this series. This was a really long series and I really liked the conclusion. Okay, adult fantasy, uh, four stars, magic system based on colors, crazy plot twists and turns throughout, and a solid conclusion that I can see, I can see why it has mixed reviews. I can see it. There was a lot of just very convenient things that all of a sudden were introduced at the end that were like, I didn't know that that's how that works. That's awfully convenient. And it got our characters out of pretty sticky situations. But that being said, I still had fun with it. It's It was just a fun ride. The series is not like the most powerful, groundbreaking, like, oh my God, it can change my life. But it's just like a fun adventure time with tons of twists and turns, like twists and turns where I was like exhausted after some of them because I was like, oh my God, I don't think I can take another twist. So yeah, I, I overall really enjoyed it. It's not a new favorite series because uh, it's just so long, so long. And it, you could feel it, like it felt long. Not one of those where I was like, oh my god, I didn't even realize how long it was. Like, like that, that's how I feel about Stormlight books where I'm, I'm like, oh my god, I didn't even know it was 1200 pages. This one I was like, I can tell it's 900 pages. But again, I had a fun time overall. Really convenient things happened at the end, but I still overall really had fun. And I really like our character arcs and growth. Like where we started with our characters is completely different than where we end up. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the pace at which the characters grew or changed. I thought it was believable enough for this story in this setting. So, oh my God, I'm just so glad to be done with it. I can't believe I'm done. Second to last four star I have is The Guest List by Lucy Foley, which is a an adult thriller and it is this isolated island setting during the time of a wedding, and it's a who done it. So there is a murder at the end of it, and you're trying to figure out what what the heck happened. Not the characters were all that likable, but I really liked getting to know their stories, and I really liked the ending. I've seen a lot of people be able to predict the ending. I am the absolute worst at predicting thriller endings. I can't, I can't do it. I've never done it. I've never once predicted an ending correctly. So this was really fun for me and it was a big surprise for me, but that's coming from someone who is the worst at it. So take that with a grain of salt. If you're really good at predicting thrillers, you may get this right away. Um, I, but I really, really liked the ending. I really liked how all the separate stories came together. I liked the setting. It felt very eerie. It was like rainy and cold and you could just feel yourself on the island with these characters. I, I thought this was really well done. It's not like a favorite, but I thought it was really fun and I had a good time throughout the entire experience. It's a great audiobook too because all the different characters have different narrators. So it was a good way to tell who was who because everyone had a very distinct voice in the audiobook. So I really appreciated that. So I, I recommend this one, especially for people who are newer to the thriller genre or if you're just 
horrible at predicting endings like me. Um, this was a lot of fun and I can't wait to check out more Lucy Foley now. I really, really enjoyed the writing style and how this was executed. All right, the last four star and my favorite four star is The Tethered Maid by Melissa Caruso. And this is adult fantasy. It is, let's see, buzzwords. It has a really unique setup for its magic. It has a lot of court politics and it has a really likable main character. I thought that this was so fun. This was so fun. I was so pleasantly surprised by this book. I thought that the magic was so interesting in this book and the way that introduced this really unique dynamic between its characters. To give you just a little bit more context behind the magic, it has this setup where there are these people who can use magic, but in order to use it, they have to be tethered to someone who can't use magic. And that person is known as their falconer and they kind of keep control of the person who can use the magic. And this is because if someone isn't there to tether that magic user, that magic can corrupt them and it, it can become very dangerous to themselves and to everyone around them. It's just a, a really unique dynamic that it introduces that I've really not seen before. I thought it was really cool and well done and it explores a lot of themes of kind of freedom and independence and is that okay? It was really interesting, um, the conversations it would bring up and the conversations the characters would have because of it. I also just really liked the plot and I love any kind of court politics. I always think that stuff is really fun, like who's trying to backstab who, who's corrupt and who's on our side, that kind of thing. I, I just thought it was so much fun and I can't wait to get to the next book. I thought it ended with a bang. It, it felt very familiar because the magic itself wasn't anything new, but it was just the way the magic could be used was really cool. Like this did a really good job of feeling familiar yet introducing something a little bit new to make it feel fresh and unique in its own way. So I had fun with it and I would highly recommend checking it out if it sounds interesting to you. I also think that this is a good one for people who are looking to transition from YA to adult. It felt like on the younger side of adult fantasy, like I think it's still firmly adult, but it felt like it was a good bridge book between YA and adult. Just the tone of it, it wasn't overly violent or graphic or anything like that. The writing style was very straightforward to the point where it was very easy to follow what was going on. There wasn't too much expansiveness where it got really complex. So I thought it was very easy to get through, um, easy to read to the point, which is why I think it's good for the YA audience. If that's what you like about YA, you like kind of the, the more to the point writing styles, you like not having these huge complex worlds you have to follow. It feels a little smaller in scope, which I really, I actually really liked. It's kind of refreshing after just finishing Lightbringer, so <laughs> this was much appreciated. All right, and one that I just finished that is definitely my favorite of the month, and that is The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abby DeRay. And this one is one that I've been wanting to read for so long, and I'm so glad I finally did. It is adult contemporary, adult just general fiction. I'm not quite sure what specific genre it would be in. I gave it five stars, easily. It follows this young Nigerian girl who loses her mother and is fighting for an education as she has to overcome obstacles to get to an education. And it is just so inspiring, so powerful. Just the this main character, Adani is our main character and she was just, the most likable human being. You couldn't help but root for her. And just and just getting a peek into her life and seeing the, the struggles she had to overcome, you just couldn't believe her strength. You couldn't believe it. I just realized that the rest of my video didn't save because I ran out of space on my phone. So I am gonna pick up where I left off, which is talking about the girl with the louding voice. Her ability to overcome adversity and remain positive and optimistic and brave through the things that she had to go through, it's unbelievably inspiring. I want to be as strong as a dunny is. It will just leave you feeling so grateful for what you have, appreciating the small things you have in life that you take for granted. And 
I loved seeing the peek into this Nigerian girl's life. It was just the most beautiful story from start to finish. I was so enthralled with every character, every step she had to take throughout her journey. I just can't recommend it enough, you guys. I, I'm i going to be trying to find more books like this because I just love them so much. And getting to experience these stories that you would just never get to without books. Getting to peek into the life of this Nigerian girl from this small village, it's the beauty of reading. It's the beauty of reading, getting to experience these stories that you would never get to otherwise experience. So if you are someone who just loves being inspired by books, being inspired by main characters, seeing something that will hopefully help open your mind and make you grateful for everything you have in life, then please read The Girl with the Louding Voice. It is unbelievably important. I loved it so, so much. And whatever else this author writes, I will read. I'm, I just loved it. I loved it so much. I love this main character. <laughs> Please go read this book. So those are all the books that I read in the month of December. Did you see any that you've also read before and what did you think of them? And then what was your favorite book that you read in December? I would love to know. So thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye. Oh.